Yeah! Look at her. Hey, Lady Rat. Oh, she's looking, she's working. And Vanda Von Aard yeah! is serving. Look at her. Hello, wow. everyone. And welcome to Look At Her, the Hey Queen after show where our super celebrity guest looks at some of the queens she's played with, slayed with, or even laid with, Ooh. and spills a little tea. <laughs> oh. mm, throws a little shade if she has to, <laughs> or just tells us something that we don't know. Today's guest is the winner of the first season of Dragula, the world's first drag super monster, Vander Von Ah! Yay! Yes! Honey, looking Hello. good. Oh, thank you. Oh, my goodness. Have you been enjoying your time with us here at Hate Queen so far? I've been having so a far? great time. I've been wanting to do this for a while, so I was really excited when you guys had me on. So I know, and you. we were supposed to film this a couple months ago, but then COVID. Yeah. So mm -hmm. thank you for coming back to the studio, and we're as safe as we can be. <laughs> Lady Red. Yes. Are you wanting to throw away your normal lady drag and just become a super monster after looking at Vander for a whole hour? Honey, I would just love to wrap a lovely bearskin rug around my tight body and just lay it all out and be Monstrina. The Monstrina, <laughs> the red couture. That's, a love. That's like, good. Full Midsommar fantasy, that yeah. like bear suit in the end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Vander, you know how to play this game, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're going to look, and you're going to spill. Work. Okay. Let us begin. Look at her. James oh, St. James. James. Oh, James was one of those people that I really clung on to as a kid growing up in a small town with very few representations of myself that I could see in other people. James had a show on MySpace called The Daily Freak Show, and it was just James going around Hollywood doing wacky things, and I watched every single episode, and I, there were so many, th like he went to a club called Shits and Giggles that was like yeah. super old, like that sort of stuff, and I remember just thinking like, oh, like I wanna move to LA and just do all these fun things, and maybe someday meet James St. James, and now we're like friends. <laughs> right. Now, was was that the first thing you saw of him, and when did you start to discover the whole party monster and history and I, all the amazing things he's done? I discovered the shockumentary first, which led me to the film, then to the book, and then finding James on socials, like on MySpace, and then kind of meeting other people through that. I was a, I was a big fan of like, um, Ernie Glam and like Walt Paper and like Jenny Talia and all those club kids. So those were all people that I was like going to MySpace and like adding them as far, you know, just like trying to, I don't know, I guess it, it, it was just really satisfying to see like weird people thriving because that's not a thing. That wasn't a thing in my hometown. Like I had never seen queer people like thrive. Yeah. Now, what was it like when you finally got to go to that basement in the World of Wonder studio and uh, have your yes. moment on transformation? Ah, uh, yes, the lovely uh, low ceiling basement. Yeah. <laughs> That's God the part they it. don't tell you. You see a beautiful studio space, you don't see all the brick walls and graffiti that are just <laughs> outside of the frame. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, the first time meeting, it was, again, it's one of those experiences that's very cathartic. You know, when you grow up seeing someone on television or listening to someone's music or things like that, you you feel such a closeness to them, but you, you know, to actually see them in flesh and blood in front of you, it's like, oh my God, like you're a real breathing human being. Um, and that was someone who was uh, a huge source of inspiration for me growing up. So to me, James, I mean, it was just a huge honor. And then over time, we just became friends. We toured the UK together with Sasha. You did? Uh, yeah, we got to tour the UK together and that was a lot of fun. So I, I really love James. Okay, look at her. Ursula, Ursula Major. You know, Ursula, Ursula moved back to Salt Lake City and it seemed like we were always like in passing. We didn't get to work a lot, so I didn't get to hang out with her very much. But uh, Ursula is a very, is a highly, highly creative, weird person in the best way. And it's a shame you don't get to see a lot of that um, on Dragula. She has like a faggot tattooed around her belly, you yeah. know, like she's that bitch. Uh, yeah, she's a lot of fun. 
Was it exciting when you went into Dragula and once you got over the nerves to sort of really be bonding and having this experience with other queens who were not in the normal uh, drag aesthetic? Yeah, for sure. I, I had never worked with most of them at that point because they again they were doing like paid gigs and I was doing I was doing tip spots. So we or we crossed paths, but um, we never actually got to talk or hang out, and especially not in the extreme environment that is Dragula, where it's like we're all competing against each other, but also we were kind of like clinging onto each other for survival. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> that was an intense shoot. It was intense, and I think. One thing that was really special about season one was that we were all LA girls. So even if we hadn't worked together, we all knew of each other. And there is that sort of closeness of living in the same city. Whereas um, now that it's international, I think it's a lot more daunting to go into a space from people you've probably never even heard of before. Like that's a whole different ball game. Are you part of uh, the casting now at all? Yeah, I wasn't for season two. For season three, I was involved in casting. So are you getting to watch tapes and give your feedback? So I didn't get to see I don't know tapes. why I say tapes. Sorry, Vander. I'm an old lady. I'm ah, like, are you watching yeah, tapes? Like people are sending in that's what VHS tapes. <laughs> tapes. Yeah, it's like a laser disc. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I, uh, what was I going to say? Um, About watching the auditions? Oh, yeah. So I, didn't, I, don't, I don't actually get to see the auditions. So... Um, my involvement in casting for season three was, I believe the Boulets watched all the videos and they picked out a core group of like 20 to 30 people. And then that's when we collectively as a team had casting meetings where we were kind of like, you know, doing it kind of like the whole like CSI detective thing with like little red strings with yeah. pins and all that <laughs> and like kind of piecing together what the cast would be. Interesting. Uh, okay, let's keep it going. And remember that you can watch season one of Dragula right here on Hey Queen TV. Check it out. Watch Vander slay. Literally. Look at her. Oh, Sasha, Sasha Valor. Another winner. Winner of Drag Race. Winner yeah. of Dragula. When did you first meet Sasha Valor? I actually met Sasha through Instagram prior to her being on Drag Race. I was asked to um, do a feature on a magazine, a UK magazine called All Right Darling. And they, when they reached out to me, they were like, oh, for reference, like, here's our previous issue if you want to see what it's like. And the issue was on Sasha. So then I followed her back on Instagram and we messaged each other and we were just really, we became like big fans of each other's work. And then lo and behold, she, she got on Drag Race. And then it all kind of, like for both of us, it kind of like blew up around the same time because she was crowned not very long after I was. Right, that's true. Yeah, it was very close. And what what was what did you think of her performance on Drag Race? I mean, what did you think about the iconic rose petals? I mean, it's one. It's it's really where I think Sasha was able to thrive was when she was allowed to do what she does her way at her best. And the only thing that was given to her was like a song. You know, I think part of the detriment to a lot of artists sometimes including Sasha on Drag Race, is that, um, I hope she's okay with me saying this, but I feel like Sasha definitely kind of played the game of this is what I want my career to be, these are the things that I want, and these are the tasks that I'm going to have to do to achieve that. Mm -hmm. And I think she went into Drag Race with a plan of like, I just need to adapt whatever I do as best to this competition because I need to win this because I want my shows and my things to explode, you know? Uh, so in that sense, I think the Sasha that you see on Drag Race is definitely Sasha Velour adapting herself to Drag Race. Mm -hmm. The real Sasha is the one you see in the finale when she's lip syncing. Like, that is Sasha. Yeah. You know? You've been to the intimate home world of Mr. and Mrs. Velour. Yes. What's something we wouldn't know about them? Oh, oh, something you wouldn't know about them. Uh... It's, I guess in my mind they were never elusive because I know them, but I guess on social media they yeah, are yeah, yeah. elusive. We just see a lot of the images and other than Drag Race, you know, we don't get to see a lot of, of just Sasha hanging around the house or anything. Yeah, I think you'd be surprised about how funny they are, like really how funny they are. In the same sense, I think people see my drag sometimes and they think I'm like this super serious, <laughs> mysterious bitch that's, you know, but... Um, Really, this is just like, it exemplifies some of our favorite parts of ourselves, but it's not all of us, you know? Yeah. I think when you're, like for me, when I'm so serious in my drag, sometimes when I'm not in drag, I'm just like, 
<laughs> you know, caution to the wind. <laughs> sure. Uh, so yeah, Sasha's just like really funny and really jokey, and will like smoke pot at her house after uh-huh. a show and just get high. As <laughs> like you know, like that's yeah, I love it, Lady Red. Right? You could get down with that at all times. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look at her. Melissa. Melissa B. Fierce. Now, you said when you saw Melissa B. Fierce on the first day of Dragula, that? Yeah, I sh- my panties. I thought she was going to be a bitch. Ooh. I really thought, because my only understanding of her was that she was more of like a West Hollywood queen who was um, very well known, had won some competitions, and like the name spoke for itself. Like, she's fierce as fuck. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I ju- and like her demeanor on set the first day was very kind of like, mm. you know, uh, it was very yeah. that. <laughs> so I was like, F- this bitch. But um, <laughs> she ended up being one of my favorite people to compete with on the show. And we connected a lot. There were days after filming where we would just be, oh my God, after the finale, we were both like covered in fake blood, exhausted. I smell like vomit, like we're just gross. <laughs> and I drove her home and we just went to McDonald's together. Yeah. And we just ate McDonald's in my car, just like sad and disgusting, both of us, you know? <laughs> so that's the kind of relationship I had I have with Melissa. Hello children, click here, click here, and subscribe. You're welcome. <laughs>